Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV. And if you grab the iPhone 17 Air, it is Apple's thinnest iPhone yet. But with that means that it has the smallest batteries of all the iPhone 17 models. In today's video, I'm gonna show you the best ways to save battery life and fix the battery drain on your iPhone Air. But all the battery saving tips I show you today will work on the iPhone 17, 17 Pro, 17 Pro Max, or older iPhones. Let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna be using the iPhone Air for this tutorial because it is the phone that's going to have the most issues with battery life. And we're gonna kick things off with some of the basic things you can turn off that are very easy within the settings application. So let's open that up right here and we'll start with that. We are gonna dive into heavier battery saving tips and optimization options you can use within here as well. So click the chapters if you wanna skip ahead. But for starters here, let's go down to the display and brightness. Having the brightness as bright as you can, like I'm using here for this video, is going to be a heavy battery user. The longer your iPhone screen is on and the brighter your screen is, it's going to create a situation where you're burning your battery faster. Now I'm gonna keep it on the brightest possible here for this tutorial, but you can set this to a lower brightness as well. And tying in with this is the auto lock. I have mine set to never because I create videos, but having it down to 30 seconds is the best. Just in case you leave your screen on on a table, it'll shut itself down automatically within 30 seconds all the way to five minutes. So set that up to better save your battery in situations where you forget to lock your iPhone. The next one down here is the always on display. This is a great feature and what it does when it's on, if you lock your iPhone, it's going to have this dimmed screen. It's not horrible when it comes to battery life, but it is a bit of a culprit at the same time. So you would wanna turn off the always on display if you wanna save that battery or at least turn off all of these options here so there's not as much going on, not as many notifications coming through and things like that as well. So set that up the way you'd like. I turn mine off for now because I am trying to conserve this battery when I use it daily. Now tying in with this display, we're gonna go back and we're gonna tap on accessibility and you're gonna tap on display and text size. From here, you're just gonna scroll down and you wanna find the auto brightness option here. You can either choose to keep it on, which will then kind of modify the brightness on the screen while you're using it, or you can turn it off. And this way it's only going to be at the brightness you set. This is only good to have it off if you're using a lower brightness in the previous setting in the display and brightness section here if you're using something like down here. This way it stays there and it doesn't increase in certain lighting situations. Like if you're using your phone outside, it's going to automatically bring it right up so that you can see it. But again, if you have this auto brightness off, make sure you have that slider in the display and brightness to a lower setting. As you can see, when I turn it back on, it's dimmed my screen. I'm gonna bring it back up for this tutorial. I do leave this on. For the next battery saving tip we're gonna use on our iPhone, we're gonna talk about dark mode and reducing the white point on your iPhone. Dark mode on your iPhone will reduce the battery life. So you're gonna tap here and you have a dark mode option. Keeping it on or setting the schedule will allow you to have a dark mode here as well. Create and edit here tap customize and set dark mode apps at the same time. This is going to help you save that battery life a little bit. And if you know about OLED screens, darker pixels use less power, especially on the iPhone 17 Air, 17 Pro displays, which are OLED. Now to reduce the white point, you're going to once again, open up the settings and we're gonna scroll down to accessibility. We wanna go to display and text size, and we're just gonna scroll down to the reduce white point. And what this is going to do is reduce the intensity of bright color. So again, very similar to the brightness option, but you can see you can play around with this slider as well to make it darker. So if you really have your iPhone dark, like this is unviewable. Now I'm not even gonna be able to get it back. <laughs> there we go. But you can really make your screen dark. So if you're in a really dark room or you don't want the light to kind of shine on people, you can use this as well. But playing with this, with the auto brightness as well, and your slider will definitely help your battery saving and percentages while you're using your iPhone. And this is good to use these things, not just overall, but in certain situations when your battery is down and you're in a pinch, you just want the phone to last a little longer. 
Now let's go over some of the battery usage insights you can use with this phone and some settings that are very important to help conserve this battery over time. So for this, open settings and tap on battery. And right off the bat, you'll see your percentage. You'll be able to see if auto lock is on. So you get that option here as well, which you can configure. You can also see here the applications that are using the most battery life over a certain period. So for me, it's TikTok, Netflix, and different apps like that. You can tap view all so you can see everything that was going on and what is taking up the most space. So if you tap on each app as well, you can see where it's being used I'm on screen was two hours and 36 minutes, five minutes, and things like that. I've been trying to work with TikTok a little bit with my YouTube channel. So uh, yeah, if you wanna follow me on TikTok, the link's in the description. But also you can see if any apps are using a lot of battery and you think they shouldn't. So especially apps that you're not really using, if you find that they're in this section where they're burning through your battery a lot, maybe removing those apps or reinstalling them would help you if there is an issue. Going down here, you always wanna check your battery health and make sure that it's normal, your maximum capacities here. Older iPhones like my iPhone 15 Pro here, 89% with 986 charges. I've only charged this one seven times. So doing some of these steps that I show you will help conserve and maintain this maximum capacity and you'll be able to uh, preserve that battery over time. Now let's get into some of the charging options. You always wanna look at these and set them up based on your own situation. Lithium ion batteries like the iPhone don't like to be at 100%. They don't wanna be pushed to charge 100% and left there constantly charging at 100%. This degrades the battery over time. So you can actually set this charge to stop charging at 95% so it never gets to that level where it doesn't like it. They also don't like to be dropped down to 20% or lower uh, so you want to try to keep that median in general when you're using your iPhone. But I had my iPhone set to about 90 or 85 percent in the past, and that's how I use it. If you're not going to use this and you do want to charge to 100 percent because this is the iPhone Air, you kind of need the most battery you can get. Optimized battery charging is a great feature to have on because it will start to work with your routine. So if you wake up every day at 7 a.m., it's going to kind of slow down the charging process and ramp it up so that it hits 100% at 7 a.m. It's a good feature as well. However, if we go back here and we go to power mode, you want to have adaptive power and adaptive power notifications turned on. This is a new feature built into the iPhones with iOS 26 here. And when your battery usage is higher than usual, your iPhone can extend your battery life by making the performance adjustments, such as lowering the display brightness and allowing some activities to take longer or turning on low power mode, which is here as well. So make sure that you have these settings enabled to give you the best chance of a conserved battery over time and in general while you're using it. And this low power mode in a pinch, you can see here, it'll temporarily reduce some background activities and processes and things like that. So when you turn this on, it turns yellow there and it will give you more time with your battery. So especially if you're very low, I suggest if you do pull down your control center here and add that low power mode to your control center, you can do that very easy here. Tap and hold, add a control, search up here for low power you'll see it appears there, you can tap on it. And now you have your own toggle like this that you can tap on and off in various situations so that you have low power mode off or on depending on what you're doing. That way you don't have to go into these settings every time. Another option within the settings application that takes up and uses a lot of the battery is the background app refresh. And we've been talking about this for years. So tap on general here. And we're going to scroll down to background app refresh. Now you can see on my phone here, I do have a lot of apps with the background app refresh on. I tend to use my phone heavily, but you can do a few things here. You can tap up here and set it to Wi-Fi only. So it's only going to use that when you're at home or connected to a Wi-Fi network. If you do have it set to Wi-Fi and cellular, it'll use a little bit more battery. Now, additionally, it is nice to have these things, you know, updating in the background and things like that. So you can just go through each app and turn them off specifically. Now, shopping applications and social applications tend to use this the most. So if you just wanted to turn those off or just a few of those off, it'll help you save some battery life just a little bit as well. 
The next iPhone 17 battery saving tip again in settings. This time we're gonna go to the mail section. So you're gonna scroll down to apps. You wanna find mail, tap on mail here, and then tap on fetch new data. It's using the automatic fetch option here, but you can set this to manually so it'll only look for the new messages when you manually refresh, or you can set it to every hour, pull those new messages, 30 minutes, 50 minutes. So you would turn this off, set one of these, and it will help you a little bit. It even says right here, for better battery life, fetch less frequently. The next battery saving tip is an easy one, pretty self-explanatory. You want to reduce the amount of notifications. So open settings and tap on notifications here. And you can see how your notifications are going to be set up. You can scroll down here and go through each app that you have on your phone and set it up so that you're not getting notifications from certain applications. Like I don't need the Apple store. I don't need certain ones here. But basically, if I turned any of these on, you would see it like this. So you can choose how the notifications are going to come through. You can announce the notifications. Otherwise, turn them off, especially for apps that you don't need notifications. I find a lot of games will try to notify you of things like you haven't been here in six days or whatever. In my opinion, you don't need to be reminded to play a game. If you want to play it, you would play it. So go through all your apps in this list, set up the notifications to be on or off. It'll help you save battery, especially if you have lots of applications like I do on my phone. The next iPhone battery saving tip here in the settings, again, we're going to go to the cellular section and you want to tap on the cellular data options. And from here, you can see we have 5G auto. And the one that we're going to focus on when we tap on that is the 5G on. You want to ensure that you're either using 5G auto or LTE. This 5G auto is going to use 5G only when it's needed for various performance relating things. So that way it can optimize the battery. If you have it on on, it's going to use the 5G whenever it's available, even when it might reduce that battery performance on your phone. So my suggestion, keep it on LTE or 5G auto, let the system do its thing. And that way you reduce the amount of battery it's using for the speeds you need at certain times. The next iPhone setting here that will help reduce the amount of battery you're using is in the settings again. And this time we're gonna to go to privacy and security and location services. You wanna turn off location services for apps that don't need it or set them to only while using the app. You just tap on that specific application and it'll give you the options here to either have it set to never, ask next time or when I share or while using the app. So never basically is gonna be the best for saving the battery life, especially for apps that don't need it. Like sometimes I download apps on the app store and then it wants to know my location like a photo editing app, like it does not need my location for that. So make sure you have these turned off just for privacy, but also battery life here. Now, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's also an option here called system services, and you can disable these significant locations here. I talked about this in a privacy video. When you open it up in general, it's tracking your location, where you're going and things like that. So that means that's always running. You can turn this off right there turn it off completely and clear out your history just for your own privacy. But in general, this will help save you battery at the same time because it's not going to keep tracking the significant locations where you've been. This next battery tip is if you want to take things really far and that's going to be disabling unnecessary visual effects on the iPhone for this in settings in accessibility again. This time we're going to go to the motion section. And if you turn on this reduced motion here, it'll pop up with the prefer crossfade transitions. You can turn that on again. Now I'll give you a quick example here of when you have these on. So now when I exit apps, it exits like this. When you open apps, it opens like that rather than the way it was kind of moving and giving you that cool transition effect. It's also going to reduce that parallax effect. So it, if you notice your apps kind of moving above the background, it'll do that as well. So you can turn these on. It'll help save the battery a little more, but then you're losing how the iPhone kind of functions and some of the cool abilities of how it looks. I don't like this one as much, especially there when you go through your app switcher. I don't use these, but if you really want to push it, you can right there. Next in the settings here, we're going to go through turning off the automatic downloads and updates. This will help you save battery. So for this, you got to go to your apps. You want to go to app store. 
And you can see right here, automatic downloads. So app updates, in-app content, you can turn those off. That way it doesn't do them automatically. You'll be the one that decides when it does it. You can also set it to turn off just on cellular. So only to do it when you're on your Wi-Fi. Because usually if you have Wi-Fi, you have a place to plug in. If you're on the go with cellular, you don't want these things running in the background, burning your battery when you need it. And you can see how fast the iPhone Air battery has gone down just during this video. Now, a couple more settings we'll go through really quick here that you wouldn't want to have on. If you tap here and you're using Siri and you use the key phrase that Siri uses, tap on talk and type, turn this one off. Because the microphone is always going to be on listening for that, if you have it on, that's what it's going to do. So if you turn this off, now the microphone's not always on and listening. So you would just use the side button to activate Siri in that scenario. From the main settings page again, you also want to limit the haptics that you're using. I use my phone traditionally on silent because I'm making videos. I don't need this thing beeping throughout the video. So if you have it on silent, there's options here to play in silent mode, the haptics. So you can choose the haptics to never play. And then also turning off the system haptics here and the lock sound. Every time you lock your phone, it does that. The keyboard feedback sound, turn that off. All of these things use the battery a little bit more. So you can shut down all of those. I've tried both ways. For me, I like the haptics. And I like I said, I use this phone pretty heavily on max settings on everything all the time. It's just how I've been using all iPhones. So I do burn through my battery. I can't get through the full day, not even close. I get through about three quarters of the day and I have to charge at best with the iPhone 17 Air. But you can set these up the way you like. Like I said, turning as much stuff off as possible with all of these tips is going to be the best to conserve your battery and give you the most battery life over time. But you have to decide what's best for you. And some of the biggest culprits just in general when you're using your phone is leaving the phone in a really hot place. If you're at the beach or in your car in the sun, if the sun is beating on this, this is the number one long term battery killer of all iPhone batteries or any lithium ion batteries for that matter. Don't let these phones heat up and avoid using them while charging in direct sunlight. Aside from that, there's the basic things like turning off your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, turning on airplane mode, but then you lose functionality with your phone. That's if you don't need it at the moment, turn those off and then close out just by pulling up for the app switcher. Close any apps that might be using a lot of battery as well. You, it doesn't really affect the phone too much these days, but if you do have a specific app that you know heats up your phone, uses it a lot, it's just that's the way that app is, just swipe up on it, get rid of it in the background. Otherwise, those background apps don't really cause a problem. It's actually better these days in the background. But those were my iPhone 17 Air battery saving tips. Use them on your iPhone 17, 17 Pro, older iPhones. They should help you conserve your battery, optimize your battery, and get the most out of your iPhone battery over the years. In my opinion, I use everything to max, but that's because I always get a new iPhone every year for these videos. If you are someone who wants to keep the phone for a long time, use some of these and find the happy median with all of these different tips to give you the most bang for your buck in terms of battery life, usage, and what you like on the iPhones. As always, there's a full link to the iPhone 17 Pro playlist, tips, tricks, and tutorial guides. Check that out. You can learn everything you can about these iPhones. They're expensive. Get the most out of them. As always, if you have any questions or ran into any trouble, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to help you out. Hit the like button, subscribe, and click the bell notification box so you're notified when I post those new videos. And as always, I will see you in the next one.